Welcome to Christ in Prophecy. 2023 is well underway and we have an exciting lineup of shows in store for you. On October 31st, 1517, Martin Luther nailed a document containing 95 theses to the door of the Catholic Church in Wittenberg, Germany. His bold act launched what would become known as the Protestant Reformation, with many of the protests centering on the excesses of the Catholic Church and its abandonment of the Word of God. Here at Lamb & Lion Ministries, we honor the entire Word of God, and we don't have to have 95 theses calling out the Pope or delineating our doctrine. Our calling centers on one mission, proclaiming the soon return of Jesus Christ to as many people as possible as quickly as possible. Our ministry's overarching theme has been to emphasize the imminence of the rapture. Through this television program, our online presence, our various conferences, and our bi-monthly magazine, The Lamplighter, our consistent message is, Jesus is coming for His church soon. And even with that clear message, we realize that there are many people who simply don't understand the meaning of the urgency of the rapture. So, Lamb and Lion Ministries has produced a wonderful booklet that explains the rapture, offering insights to people as we wait for Jesus to call us to Himself and to others who will be left behind when He comes for the church. It is often difficult to give credit to the ideas that are woven into our understanding or spark our creativity. I've even told other preachers that if I don't remember to cite them as the source for sermon ideas, I'll just give glory to the Holy Spirit who inspired them in the first place. But in this case, we know exactly where the idea for our rapture booklet came from. James Panafina, who pastors, pastors a Baptist church in Baldwinsville, New York, just outside of Syracuse, had a wonderful idea a few years ago. Actually, as Tim indicated, we'll say that the Holy Spirit inspired James to have a wonderful creative idea. So, instead of describing this idea, we've asked James to join us today to explain what the Lord laid on his heart. So, without further ado, James, welcome to this episode of Christ in Prophecy. Hey guys, it's so good to be with both of you. It's uh, quite an honor. Well, it's our honor to have you here again through the miracle of modern technology. So, for our viewers who might not really understand what we're talking about, what is the rapture? What does the Bible tell us we should be looking for as sons and daughters of Christ? Okay, um, I'll take like 45 minutes to explain the rapture. <laughs> yeah. No, just, just kidding. Um, the rapture is really our blessed hopes in Titus 2.13. And um, it's quickly and succinctly referenced in 1 Thessalonians 4, uh, 13 through 18, 1 Corinthians 15, 51 through 53. Uh, it's called the catching away harpazo, from which we get the word rapture from, from Latin Vulgate. And uh, it really is our blessed hope. It refers to, I believe, clearly in scripture, a pre trib before the tribulation, seven years. Uh, and it's for the believing church. All believers will be caught up to meet Christ in the air. That's our transformation. That's our, uh, we put on incorruption. We get our resurrected body in the rapture. Mm. Well, excellent. Well, Pastor James, uh, we have the same passion for the rapture of the church and the imminency of it and proclaiming the message as you. Uh, years ago, we made this disc, uh, Did Many People Disappear? Jesus Came, What's Next? If you want to see a very younger Nathan Jones, uh, we have this available. We put this online. Uh, we also have uh, your Rapture booklet now, which is just an excellent booklet. And brother, we thank you so much for the idea because now our ministry has created our own Rapture booklet to coincide with this one. So I want to ask you though, where did you see a void in the church for the message of the Rapture? Because so many people, when you even that you even have to define the word Rapture, is telling that churches just aren't teaching it. Well, as you guys certainly know, and, and you speak on quite often, that is we have, um, I'd like to go back just slightly in history, go back to the 70s when the late great planet Earth came out. That had a great influence on my life uh, coming to Christ and really my view of eschatology, including obviously the, the rapture, the pre rapture. Um, but it does appear that from the, the 70s, 80s, 90s, and on to 2022, the uh, emphasis on eschatology, in particular the pre trip rapture is has waned quite a bit. And what I've seen, and again, I know you also have seen this, that what has replaced it is a variety of post-millennial and amillennial views that um, basically mock or eliminate the rapture and uh, Bible prophecy in general. So that's what concerned me. And that's why I, the ministry that we have, uh, Perspective and Prophecy, is that's what it's all about, awakening the church as much as we can uh, to what the Lord has already given to us regarding prophecy for today. 
And really, I think you would agree, it's not just what he's given us looking forward, it's also what he's giving us to lay a foundation. James, you and I were talking about the creation. What we've referred to, and you use the same phrase, the bookends of the Bible. And so there's only one eyewitness of what happened at the beginning, and one eyewitness who knows what will happen at the end, and that is God himself. And yet too often, we don't emphasize within Christendom, or the church, at least in the West, the foundational understandings of creation as dictated and, and proclaimed in Scripture itself. And so, so many young people have no foundation upon which to build their faith, and they tend to flounder or drift away from it. And frankly, once again, it is a, a blasphemy to deny the very testimony of the living God when He says, listen to what I've done, and I'm telling you for a reason. Yeah, I think that like we were talking about the other day, um, there's definitely a parallel with taking Genesis 1 through 3 and taking what we would call end times eschatology, the, the things that refer to Bible prophecy being fulfilled today in the future, in the millennium and, uh, you know, to the consummation. But I think what we have is that you, um, if the things of Scripture become allegorical, which is really the root, I, I do believe, uh, and that goes back in history, and a lot of the church has absorbed the allegorical way of interpreting scriptures instead of the plain rendering. Mm. So when you take Genesis, for instance, and you say that they're, well, that's it's not a literal six-day creation, it's a day-age theory or something of that nature where it becomes uh, very different than what the Bible teaches, and including the creation of Adam and Eve, the fall, and the subsequent uh, you know, outcome of that. Um, if that was not literally true, in real time, in real history, then as I've mentioned to you the other day, I've worked with a lot of college students, a lot of high school students over the last couple of decades, and they bring it up. They say, well, if that's not true, then what parts are true? And often someone would say, how do I know John 3.16 is true in the literal form of for God to love the world? Um, but I think that same allegorical method has also been applied to eschatology, and therefore we end up having um, a, a variety of I'll say uh, opinions that are not really rooted in scripture. They're rooted in a uh, very uh, different type of interpretation than what we're used to. Uh, amillennial in particular would be uh, very troubling. Uh, to me it is uh, that, I'm, well, it doesn't mean what it says. It means uh, there's no real millennium. The church has replaced Israel. We're living in somewhat of a kingdom, unspecified time, age right now. Satan has been bound for ever since the cross. These things uh, do not line up with reality, and they certainly don't line up with Scripture. Yet, uh, a lot of churches have gone this way over the last couple of decades, which is, for me, it's hard to understand. It's hard for me to understand as well. And I would just point out that the very first words uttered by Satan as recorded in Scripture were in mm. Genesis chapter 3, verse 1, Indeed has God said. In other words, Satan at the very beginning trying to undermine the credibility of God and trying to undermine the testimony of God and to sow confusion and really plant deception in the heart of man. And we know what that led to in the very garden itself. It's still leading today to people moving away from faith in the true and living God and in His Word to making up, if you will, fairy tales of their own uh, instead of standing on the Word of God. And this is why I think the Apostle Paul in the very first sentence of one of the major passages when it was related to the rapture, 1 Thessalonians 4, it's 13 through 18, he says, but I don't want you to be ignorant. And it seems like what we have today is an ignorant, not only a Bible prophecy, because that's a, a segment of the Bible, 31%, but of the Bible overall. We live in a time period where we have Bibles everywhere, apps everywhere, Christian resources everywhere, but people just aren't reading. They're a mile wide and inch deep. And if they only read, and what a beautiful passage this is, but I do not want you to be ignorant. In other words, I want you to know this, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, who have died, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. So right there he's saying, hey, this is going to give you hope. What is it? For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up, and there's the word rapio or rapture, be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord with the air, and thus we shall always be with the Lord. And what does he say here? Therefore, verse 18, comfort one another with these words. Yes. It just seems like so many people today have been robbed of that comfort. Um, 
you know, it's the, the irony of all this, <laughs> it, we, uh, I don't think we can exaggerate it. In a time when in our country, like with the, the past few years and the COVID situation, um, a lot of people have abandoned church, they've abandoned Christ. Um, there's an epidemic of hopelessness, which can be seen in the, in the rise of depression, anxiety, and suicide. And so we see these things happen concurrent with our contemporary time when we should be, at least as the church, uh, we should be a message, a messenger, I should say, of great hope. And the rapture is uh, right on top of that. And so if we don't do that, we're actually, I don't want to say robbing people, but we're denying people of the, the, the greatest access to hope that they ever could find, and that is Jesus Christ. And so that's why we do prophecy. It's about Christ. It's about his return. It's about the hope uh, that we have. And I, I love that passage that you said, especially verse 18. Um, we're commanded there to proclaim this message of hope. Yes, we are. I love what Peter has to say in 2 Peter chapter 1, beginning in verse 16. He said, For we did not follow cleverly devised tales when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we were eyewitness of His majesty. In other words, even His first coming, all of the accounts all the way back to Genesis that Jesus gives us as the revealed person of God, the Word of God Himself, are true. They're not made up. They're not tales. And so Peter goes down in verse 19. He says that, you have the prophetic word speaking about the church itself, which is even more powerful than Peter's own eyewitness experience of witnessing the transfiguration of Jesus Christ. And then in a dramatic understatement, he said, to which you would do well to pay attention as to a lamp shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your heart. And he says beyond that, that no prophecy of scripture is a matter of one's own interpretation for no prophecy was ever made by an act of human will, but men moved by the Holy Spirit who spoke from God. So all of God's prophetic word is as valid as the red letters you might say, but we would do well to pay attention to it because that is the testimony of Jesus Christ and it points to His coming, which is what gives us hope in our blessed hope in spite of the despair we see infecting the entire world around us. And how exciting too, when you go to the other major rapture passage, 1 Thessalonians, uh, excuse me, 1 Corinthians 15, 51, behold, I tell you a mystery. Well, right there, that's exciting, a mystery. We shall not all sleep. In other words, shall not die, but we shall be all be changed in a moment in the twinkle in the eye at the last trumpet for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised uh, incorruptible and we shall be changed. Mm. And it goes on and on to tell us about our immor mortality and how death has lost its sting and, and we praise the Lord for it. And this is exciting and sure I wish is. the whole church would be excited about this, but all I hear is crickets whenever you bring up the rapture. Most Christians just do not know about the rapture. One, one of the things just mentioned at verse 51, um, you know, where he says, behold, I show you a mystery. Um, mysterion could also be translated very easily uh, a secret. And I've heard many people say uh, in a mocking tone, uh, you guys believe in a secret rapture. I said, uh, yeah. well, that's what Paul said. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm only believing what the scriptures say. But if we, I think both of you have noted that if we don't use the scripture as our, as our primary text for doctrine and for what we believe, then it's every man for himself. And that will explain a lot of the chaos that we see in the church today. Absolutely. Well, James, one of the things that really thrills my heart, and it's been part of Nathan's motivation, I think, as long as he's been here at Lamb and Lion Ministries, probably before, is not just the message we proclaim to Christians today, to those who we call to flee from the wrath to come. In other words, we're trying to pronounce to the church and to those who don't yet know Jesus Christ, come to the faith and be faithful in looking forward to our soon returning King. But you also have a heart to be able to reach people after the rapture, which is why your booklet, yes. and we borrowed this as well, is What Happened and Why, which is, means that this booklet is not only for here and now, it's an explanation for people who are indeed left behind so that even then mm -hmm. they would embrace Christ as their Savior and Lord. Because that's your mission, right? You want to get this to as many people as possible as quickly as possible so that they can give these to people who we know will be left behind and aren't saved to bring them to salvation in Jesus, right? So the real impact is probably not so much before the rapture, but after. Well, yeah, you hit the nail on the head. If you go back to the root, why did I feel in the sense the Lord led me to put this together? And, and obviously you guys are doing the same thing, which is great. Um, 
Revelation 7, 9 through 14, uh, John is in the future, in the future of even from right now, and he sees what he terms uh, innumerable. In the Greek, it uh, cannot be numbered. It's a huge throng of people coming into heaven, and he asks, who are they? And I know you guys are familiar with it, but it, he's announcing these are the tribulation saints, most likely in the early part of the tribulation. This is the, those who, uh, I'd like to think maybe some of them have read these booklets, yours, mine, mm. and others. Uh, they've gotten the material, they procrastinated, maybe they never understood, maybe they didn't have a church background, but when the rapture happens, uh, I think it's safe to say the greatest revival the world has ever seen or ever will see will take place. And I think we have a direct connection. The Great Commission doesn't stop with our last breath. The yeah. Great Commission goes beyond into uh, the tribulation period when we're not even here. And to me, to have this... Um, I'd say this this opportunity is um, it's, it's exciting. I'm so grateful to the Lord for having this uh, this opportunity to be able to communicate to people that we won't meet this side of eternity, but we will someday. You know, even as you cite that passage out of Revelation, I'm reminded of going to various places in Israel in particular. I think of uh, Yardinit, where we go and, and have a baptismal service, and there are people who stream to that location to be baptized in the Jordan River from every nation of the world. You can hear so many different tongues. They even have plaques in various languages. And to me, it's just a little microcosm of what heaven's going to be like with people from all over the earth speaking all sorts of different languages, but all united in their love and their faith of Jesus Christ. And so it's just a little preview of heaven, so to speak. What, what else are you working on today, James, as your heart is to proclaim the gospel to get people excited about Jesus Christ and to have that message linger even after the church is removed from the from the world. Yeah, oh my my, where do we begin? Um, one of the projects, and if people have interest, you could just type my name on Facebook, James Ponifino. I'm pretty sure I'm the only Ponifino on there. <laughs> um, and I write every day a one-page devotional uh, to encourage. A lot of it's apologetics driven, but I'll cover a variety of topics and especially Bible prophecy. And so that's one project I do every day. It keeps me in the scriptures because um, 24 hours go by real fast. So I better make sure I do something uh, biblical and constructive. Um, I'm out speaking in conferences uh, with other churches. One of the major ministries that I have, and I don't, I'm not going to say it's unique because I have no way of knowing that, but um, I would like to encourage churches that are um, pastors. Maybe they're not trained in prophecy. Maybe their seminary background was not something to emphasize eschatology so uh, they don't feel equipped. Um, I, places where maybe they don't watch Prophecy Watchers, they don't watch Lamb and Lion, they don't know about Jan Markell or the rest, they're not into this stuff. And so I would, uh, I'm trying to reach out to those pastors and church leaders to mentor them and in some sense, I suppose, disciple them in Bible prophecy. Um, my teaching, like most pastors, it's, it's directly from the scripture, it's heavy with scripture, devotional, that I do every day on Facebook and also uh, my, my teaching in Bible prophecy and all other topics. Mm. So these are the projects that keep me, and also pastor at church. So, so it's like, there's never a dull moment. You're uh, a busy fact, man. Um, and plus we have a family that my mother-in-law moved in with us recently, 92, and our daughter moved back from Colorado with a two-year-old and two-month-old. So we're, uh, those aren't necessarily ministry projects, but they certainly keep us busy, and we're very grateful for it. <laughs> you are a busy man, for sure. Well, I, brother, I just love the heart you have for reaching people for Jesus Christ. Uh, likewise, I, I think what you did with this rapture, uh, we put this out at conferences. We make sure people know about so they can get that out there. And, of course, thank you for sharing your idea with us so our ministry could also produce a booklet. And, again, we've left so many materials on our website at christinprophecy.org, our own left-behind message that people can share. And brother, I think we're going to make a bigger impact after the rapture than even we're doing now. Um, well, I hope so. Uh, that's our, like I mentioned earlier, that's our, that's our goal is to reach people that are at this moment unreachable. Um, but at the same time, like yourself, we're trying to, we're trying to encourage the body of Christ. We're trying to bring Bible prophecy, the hope, the blessed hope of Christ uh, to people today. And you read the same stats that I read, uh, Barna recently, recently put out the thing from Arizona State Christian University. 
I couldn't believe it. That's probably another program, but I just cannot believe what I was reading from evangelical pastors. Um, the Bible has many predictions of the last days, and one of them is one that concerns all of us, that is apostasy, uh, that falling away. And we see it happening. Uh, I know lots of pastors out there. I'm rubbing shoulders um, every week with them. And um, I see a lot of churches, a lot of pastors struggling uh, to stay the course. So our mission, like yourself, is really to encourage by the truth of the scripture and Bible prophecy is central to it because it's unfolding right before our eyes. So these are exciting days to be living in. Well, James, I just have to tell you how appreciative I am for the heart you have for serving the Lord, your faithfulness to the inspiration he laid, and the fact that you're willing to share it with us and with others to say, hey, make your own product, do whatever you need, but let's get this message out. I'm reminded of what Jesus said in Mark chapter 9, verse 40, when he said, he who is not against us is, is for us. And clearly, we are all for Jesus Christ. So thank you again, James, for joining us today. I think there is another program in our near future to get together again, but we do pray the Lord's continued blessing on you, on your ministry, and on your family as well. Thank you. God bless you both. And uh, I love uh, Lamb and Lion. Keep up the good work. Thank you, sir. We'll take a short break. And when we return, we'll have a special offer that will allow you to share the good news that Jesus is coming soon. For over 42 years, Lamb and Lion Ministries has proclaimed the soon return of Jesus Christ to as many people as possible, as quickly as possible. Our entire staff is dedicated to that gospel-centered message which we get out through the Christ in Prophecy television program, our bi-monthly magazine, The Lamplighter, a huge library of books, pamphlets, DVDs, and of course, our dynamic and interactive website. We point new generations and new audiences to our blessed hope. And I hope that you've found it to be encouraging to you because we can't do it alone. This faith-based ministry is supported by thousands of Prophecy partners, which enable our outreach through their faithful prayer and financial support. Prophecy Partners commit to contributing $25 a month, less than a dollar a day. And in return, they receive a print edition of our Lamplighter magazine and updates on the impact this ministry is having around the world. If you've been blessed by Lamb and Lion Ministries, join with us, partner to share the exciting message that Jesus is coming soon. Godspeed. For many Christians, the doctrine of the rapture seems about as alien as an eight-track to an eight-year-old. Why our ministry's founder, Dr. David Reagan, often quipped that most people, when they hear the word rapture, thinks it's a sensation you get when your girlfriend kisses you. Sure, they may have somewhere heard about the rapture, often likely in the negative, but rarely do people ever ponder over how much the world needs Christ to return or to see that this glorious event could possibly ever take place in their lifetime. And very rarely do preachers ever teach about the rapture resulting in the church over the past 2,000 years generally ignoring what Titus 2.13 describes as our blessed hope. I can at some level understand and almost excuse the disregard for such a vital teaching. After all, the Great Commission commands all Christians to go and make disciples of all nations in sharing the good news. Then there's discipleship, which involves yielding to the Holy Spirit and the lifelong process of spiritual refining through personal spiritual disciplines. So Christians are kept pretty busy. But still, a vital part of the Christian walk is lost when we're not anticipating the return of our Lord. The teaching of the rapture encourages us, motivates us to holy living and evangelism, and inspires hope, all important for surviving these dark days. And this is exactly why Layman Line Ministries exists, to proclaim the hope-filled message that our Savior is coming back in victory. Soon and very soon, every person, living and dead, who have trusted in Jesus Christ as their Savior will be caught up to meet Him in the air. We will be transformed into our glorified eternal bodies to live with our Heavenly Father in the place He has prepared for us before the world descends into the chaos of the tribulation. Well, thankfully, throughout church history, there have been like-minded remnant of believers who have also longed for our Lord's appearing. The Apostle Paul was one of them, as well as others who, down through the ages, long for the rapture to happen in their lifetimes. Men like William Blackstone and Clarence Larkin urged their fellow Christians to anticipate Christ's appearance. In 1970, Hal Lindsey released the book, The Late Great Planet Earth, which focused on the imminency of the rapture. No less than the New York Times declared Lindsey's book to be the best-selling nonfiction book of the 1970s, and its teachings helped fuel the Jesus movement. 
Well, then in 1995, Tim LaHaye and Jerry Jenkins released the best-selling Left Behind series of books and movies, which presented a fictionalized account of the post-rapture world. And today, a wonderful modernization of the first Left Behind movie will be released in early 2023. I watched the rough cut and believe it to be very promising with a high production value and an all-star Christian cast. As Paul Lalande, the movie's producer, points out about the rapture, it's a true story, it just hasn't happened yet. Even those who have dismissed the urgent warnings of the Christian watchmen are realizing their society is running dangerously amok. The global order is breaking down at a breathtaking pace. The prophecies God's word foretold about the end times are coming to pass and right before our eyes, and even the secular world is taking notice. But when I make the argument for the value of studying the doctrine of the rapture, don't take my word for it. I encourage you to open God's word. Read the account of the end times as foretold by the prophets. Realize that the signs of the times are proclaiming the imminent return of Jesus Christ. Recognize that embracing Christ's promise to rescue his church from the wrath to come does not lessen our faith, but rather inspires it. My fellow Christians, let's embrace Christ's command to look up and lift up your heads because your redemption draws near by making that knowledge the blessed hope that empowers us each and every day victoriously into our Savior's glorious return. God bless. Well, Tim, it's a great joy to partner with other watchmen who share the same passion we do for the soon return of Jesus Christ. You're exactly right. And it's a privilege for us to connect with you each week as well. We know from your letters and emails and phone calls that many of you share the same passion for Jesus and His coming. We are ongoingly grateful for your prayer and financial support so that we can proclaim His coming far and wide. Well, you've already seen how you can partner with Lamb and Lion Ministries. Prophecy Partners are what make this ministry possible. Well, today we want to offer you a special double feature. Let's call it a triple feature, because for only $20, including shipping, we'll send you two of our Rapture booklets, one of this other Rapture booklet, and the I Am A Watchman kit. You'll find all of them informative and inspirational, and you'll be eager to pass them on to somebody else, all in fulfillment of both the Great Commission and your role as a watchman. We do not know when God the Father will tell His Son to go and get your bride, but we sense that His coming is imminent. That could mean today, this week, this year, or in the next few years. Regardless, while we have breath, we are called to warn every person we can to flee from the wrath to come and into the loving arms of our Savior. Jesus is coming soon. When He does, He will either be your blessed hope or your holy terror. Do not delay. Put your trust in Him today. Then commit to serving Him as a watchman. Join us again next week when we will have another special surprise in store for you. Until then, I'm Tim Moore along with Nathan Jones. Do not be afraid or dismayed, but be encouraged as we see the day drawing near. Godspeed. Tim Moore.